Hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to change the brake pads, rear brake pads on a Citroen C8. So the first thing is I've parked the car, chopped the front wheels and taken the handbrake off. So the first thing I've got to do is loosen the wheel nuts. So, don't completely loosen the wheel nuts. Each one just gets a little crack to take the pressure off. Right. Next thing is to jack up the car. Now, let me take this. This is the jack, you can see just underneath there where the jack goes. This fits in that little part that's been strengthened, wind it up by hand, make sure it's in the right place. It's on a firm ground, jack's on concrete. Right, let's take out the slack and now to jack up the car. You can see I've just slid in what I'm going to use to stand the car on. These are two heavy cast iron blocks, which are stable and strong. I'm putting a piece of wood underneath to uh, protect the car so it doesn't damage the underside of the car. And now lowering it down onto it. It'll creak a bit as the wood takes a strain. You can hear that cracking a bit. Right, the jack's now loose. Just gonna leave that there. So the jack's holding a teeny bit of weight, um, but not much. Just in case anything goes wrong, just so I've got two things supporting it. Now I undo the one. You can see that spinning. If I hadn't loosened them earlier, that wheel would be spinning round and round and round and I'd never get the nuts off. Two. Three. Now I always leave one on to the end because that helps hold the wheel still. If you try and take them all off, the wheel wobbles. One gets tight, next one gets tight and gets loose and tight, it's a pain in the backside. So, leave one to the end. And then one to the end. Right. Take the wheel off. That's the caliper itself. This is the disc. And that's a brake pad. And you can see how close it is to the disc. It's very worn. 
And there's another one. And you can see on the other side. And there is a well. There. Can you see that? Right. So it's very easy to take off. There's two bolts, one here and one here. You undo those and the whole thing comes away. First thing to do though, because this is the back brake, is we've got to take off this brake cable. So put this camera down. I'm just getting the smallest screwdriver. Leave that in there. Somewhere. This thing's in the way, it's a pain in the neck. Oops. Right, let's leave it that in there. That's taking the slack off that. Right, next thing is to undo these bolts. There's lots of different designs um, for these things. Every manufacturer seems to do their own weird and wonderful thing. There's no rhyme or reason to it, all as far as I can see. But, anyway, oh, so. This is coming off here. Yeah, there you go, that's twig. But if you notice, you see that? Watch my turn. That is turning as well, which is no good. So I'm getting a spot. That's a 15 mil. Get that on there, and that will hold that still. Now, this is bit of an achievement with two hands. a couple of turns to get it a bit loose. Right. That's the pain in the neck. I'm just getting a 13 mil spin on it now. And you just undo that. Should be discarded. Right, and then to do the other one. Exactly the same process. Got the spare on there. extension bar on this one. I just hook that straight on. Which is a lot easier. Alright. Okay. 
can see the calipers are quite loose now. That'll do for the thing. Let's go to the spinner. As soon as it's loose enough to turn with your fingers, that's what you want to do. Alright, done. Take that off. And that one's rubbish as well. Alright, now, slide these. They're both sliding very nicely, so they don't need anything. Now, I need to get this off. And for that, Use my giant screwdriver to just leave it up. If this, if this was a front brake, I'd be levering this way to squash the master cylinder back in. But because it's a rear brake which incorporates the handbrake, you can't do that. So, there we go. Now, now that would be why the brakes were so noisy. You can see how low that is, and I think the other one looks even worse. You can imagine that. see that rubbing it's been rubbing on the disc itself that'd be why it was making that awful grunting sound and there as well so a little bit overworn okay okay now another way you can tell this has got a handbrake on it, apart from the fact it's got that cable, which we've removed. It's got these two notches here. And the reason they're there is because you have to turn the cylinder and screw it back in, back into the body of the uh, brake housing. And there's two little pins that locate in there and squash it in. First of all, we need to give that a clean before we can do that. So I'm just gonna give, get my toothbrush and give that a brush up. This dust is not good for you. So keep away from it or wear a mask. It's not so bad if you're outside. But if you're inside in the garage, definitely should wear a mask. Especially in this world of health and safety madness. Generally get all the dust off. I don't know why. Just what you need. So there's a whole load of new dust can stick on it, maybe. Alright. And as I'm cleaning this dust off, I'm examining this rubber seal. Let's it. 
Right, so there's this end of the cylinder. Here's a rubber seal that keeps it clean, stops it corroding. Now, I'll do a bit more brushing and uh, Now at this point, you have to have a special tool. It's a brake pusher. Oh, no. um, that screws in like that. And that pushes the cylinder in while screwing it in as well. That hooks on there. Those two lumps hook in with the uh, two grooves in the top of the slave cylinder that I just sort of showed you earlier and then screw that in. So, wind that all the way down. Hook on this thing, which holds it in the brake. And put it in. Right. Yep. Right. Yeah, line the pins up. And put it in. Problem. This is so warm. Oh, this is coming out a bit too far. Okay, I'll try it the other way around. I'll switch it off after a minute. Right, so I'm going to put this on here like that. And then I'm going to put this on from this side. As I say, it's more, more than one way to skin a cat. Got a couple of turns on it. That is tight. That is really, really tight. That's what they are, mate. Right. Got a couple of turns. Take this off. Take that out. Get this one the right way. The reason I want it on this way is because it just sits, sits better. As I'm turning this, I'm also watching to make sure that the rubber seal doesn't twist. Mm. That is really tight, so I'm going to need a bit of extra leverage. And then I'm looking around the side. I'll move that. Right. You have to 
see that turning. This rubber, I'm making sure that it stays still. I have had one of these in the past where it was jet. Jammed. And where the cylinder was turning, the rubber was jammed to it, and this got in a great big twist. And if I hadn't noticed, it would have ripped. So I had to ease it off. And uh, kind of open it a little bit, put some grease on it. Silicon grease, not all kind of grease, and uh, right, I'm gonna try and turn this around again. Don't want to turn it too quickly. I'm going to give these things a chance to seat down as they go. You'll see that rubber crinkling as it goes in. It's getting a bit easier to turn now. It's a lot easier to turn it. See, I don't need that screwed spanner anymore. There's one reason why it's not turning. Right, tighten that up again. Not sure what happened there. Let's turn it in the way. Fixed, but for some reason it isn't. Here's why. Right. It's turning in anyway. That's going very easily now. You see the rubber wrinkles are right around itself. You just keep going. Sometimes it can get a bit of a kink because it's doing this last bit. It's worth checking it to make sure it's going okay. Yeah, you see that? Got a kink there. Just there, starting to drag. So wind that back. It's gone in enough. I don't Turn it. 
I'm winding it back. Yeah, it's been a lot further. Went back, forward, and back. Yeah, I yeah, know it stopped. Right. Now we're ready to put it back together. So, first thing is we need to, this is where the pads sit. They slide along here, and here, and here, and here. So, that needs cleaning. And I'll scrape it with a screwdriver, get rid of any heavy oops, deposits. Make sure it's smooth. Right, let me get the brush on it. We're good. Same thing about the dust. Don't breathe it. It's not good for you. Right. Now got this stuff, which is called silicon grease. Just put a little dab of that on there. And on there. Don't get it on there. That's the brake surface. You'll find that when you put the brakes on, the car just keeps moving forwards. we need to put some on is contact surfaces of the pads. Now these pads are the same, there's no front or back or left or right. So you can put them on anywhere around. So that's on there, it's gonna go that one. And then this one is gonna go here. Let's have some there, and let's have some there. Right. That's it. And. Oh. Got that one. You can see how much the other ones were worn. It's been nearly a centimetre of pad. You compare the two, that's a bit scary. Anyway, right. And then we lift this up. Put it off. So, I'm pushing in these so that they catch. Get out of the way rather so they don't catch. Right. And that's pretty much it. No, we're, we're putting it back together now. Okay, so these are the two. These bolts replace the ones that I took off. So, let's put one of these. Get one in first. Pretty obvious, really. You can't screw two in at once. Right, that's just in a bit. That's located. Just this side down. Get this one in. If that isn't seated quite straight, those bolts don't go in. It's the right pain in the neck, but that's done there. All right, so, let's do it the other way around. I'll screw them in as tight as I can with my hand. Now I'm going to my 
Ana. This is one. One thing's interesting to note: these are genuine pads, and they come with these screws. I've bought pattern pads before, and they don't come with the screws, which is a bit of a concern. You could probably reuse the old ones if you've got some Loctite or something. The other thing I didn't mention is another special bit of equipment, and that's torque wrench. I don't know what setting this is supposed to be, but I've set it to 35 newtons, which is oh, 25 foot pounds. And that's about three and a half kilograms. So. Oops. Yeah. Turn that round. Turn up. I thought it was going the wrong way. There we go. That's all I like it. You should look up the Newton setting in your service manual or something. There you go, that's it, click. You can see the head of the spanner goes. It moves there, you can hear it more than you can see it. Let's see if you can show it here. Oh, see that, it clicks. That means it's right tension. Right. Remember to put the brake cable back on. Can you see that? Is that too close? What can you see? Jet, put those two bolts in. Put the cable back in. Quick look around the back. Uh, anything come off? I've been disturbed. No. One thing, when I was using this caliper, when I was working on this caliper, you'll notice I just left it back to one side there. It's important not to move it around too much because you can strain the hoses that connect to it. So you should try and not to move it around too much. Right, put the wheel back on. Just 
just noticed the battery's running out. So if we don't finish this, that'll be why. But as you can see, it's not taking long. Can't do the other one. But, yeah. This is the old wobbly wheel thing again, which I mentioned at the beginning. So I'm going to get this nut in on the way. Right, and that will pretty much hold it still. Hold this down here. That's the beginning again. Like that. 